I'm going to be doing this weekend is cooking some lasagna for the family. So I'm quickly browning um, some of the meat. Now what I wanted to show you is that I've got a pan there with a grill on it um, because I know as I warm this up the fat is going to drop and that's what I want. I want as little as fat as possible in my meat mix. So that's why I've got that configuration. So it'll be interesting to see how much fat we actually get out of there. I know those of you in the UK always like to know what the prices are here in Canada. So here we've got one and a half kilos. That would be three, about three pounds, I guess, of ground meat. Um, they call it Hamburg in here, so or lean, extra lean. It's already meant to be extra lean ground beef, right? And that cost us twenty dollars Canadian. So do your conversions. I'm going to put this back in the fridge, just so that it keeps it cool. So just for those of you who don't know, I've put it on at about three seventy-five, and I've got it on for about fifteen minutes, I guess. I'm not going to leave it. I'm going to keep turning it and moving it because really all I'm trying to do is to brown it all and to get rid of what fat I can before I make the rest of the mixture. Now as you can see that is gently browning. I've still got a little bit there that isn't quite cooked yet. But it is very gently browning. It's not burning it or doing anything else. So as I said 375 we're down to the last five minutes now. Looks like just about the right amount. Uh, when that's finished, I'm going to put it aside, put the other half in, and uh, then we'll start adding vegetables and fixings to it and let it grow up. And that turned out to be exactly the right amount of time. So that's awesome. So I'm going to put this in the stock pot, in the slow cooker, and then brown off the second batch of meat. I started to pulse before I talk to you. So for those of you who don't know, this is how I chop up my vegetables for things like lasagnas or shepherd's pie or anything. I've got it all in my blender and all I do is I just Then I'm going to do. Uh, I've got some water in there, by the way, because that helps it to pulse up nicely. And now I'm just going to strain it and throw all of that goodness into uh, the slow cooker. I've already put in mushrooms and onions, and I will be adding the rest of the meat, which is just cooking at the moment. And as it just strains, just so you know, I've got tomatoes, green peppers green onions, uh, red peppers, or yellow peppers. What else did I have in there? <laughs> Whatever else leftover vegetables I had in the fridge. Because uh, that's what I like to do for my weekend meals, is to use up any vegetables in a nice appetizing way. So I'm just straining the most of the liquid off, which I just about got to. It's just got a, a small stream going now. And uh, then I'm going to put it in the stock in the slow cooker. So that's lots of goodness in there. Lots of vegetables, mushrooms, onions. Oh, I haven't got carrots in yet. I've got to put those in as well. And then what I'm going to do is just have it on high on my slow cooker for about four hours and just let it all uh, cook nicely together. Uh, I'm not even going to add any seasonings or anything until after all that's done because I want to know what is it going to taste like before I start adding stuff. I think all too often we add the seasonings a little bit too early. Remembering that I'm not going to serve this until tomorrow and I'm going to let it cook for a little while till it starts to sort of look fairly cooked, then I will taste it, then I will start adding stuff and then I'll cook it some more so all those flavours can work their way in. I'll then leave it sitting uh, in the fridge overnight. Yum! 
Now I had a quick look in the freezer and I found some leftover onion. I found some uh, cubes of pasta sauce that obviously would be ideal to go in now. And so I'm just using up things that uh, I found some leeks that I had frozen. So they are all good stuff to go into something like this. So they're, it's all going in together. Looking good. Here's the cooked ground beef with uh, all those vegetables that I had in it. Uh, it tastes absolutely great. I'm trying to remember what I added in um, for seasonings. I know I put out quite a bit of uh, Worcestershire sauce, if any of you like Worcestershire sauce. Uh, it has a nice bite to it and uh, just gives ground beef a really nice kick. I added some tomato sauce to give it a little bit of sweetness. I obviously have salt and pepper. I'm quite sure that a lot of you would have put garlic in it, but as you probably know, I'm allergic to garlic, which is why you don't see me put it in my food. Um, and I also put in some bovril seasoning, liquid seasoning. For, um, but I wanted to say something. I was delighted how it tasted. Now, I promised you when I was making the video yesterday, by the way, when it was cooked, I just put it in a flat ish um, baking pan and let it cool down and then I had it in the fridge overnight covered. Um, I promised you yesterday that I'd give you the easy way out of making cheese sauce and here it is. And what I do if I want to add this sort of kick is I took some old Dutch uh, chili, uh, salsa con queso Wait, is it? I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, and just a little bit of milk, and it makes a very, very nice, quick cheese sauce if you want it. Saves a lot of time if you're in a hurry. I also have some shredded cheese that I'm going to be putting in between and on top. And um, all I'm going to do now is I'm cooking the pasta. Just cook then I'm going to start just layering it out and hopefully it will taste really good. Well there they are all layered and by the way because it is fall I actually uh, on one of the layers put in some courgette or marrow depending on which country you're in. Just a thin very thinly sliced marrow um, because I like to use the vegetables of the season and the other thing I'm going to do is, because the chances of this boiling over as it cooks are probably pretty good, I've made a sort of like a <laughs> attachment area of foil. Um, I'm going to cover the top and let it bake, uh, but I'm going to put the foil inside this wrap here and then wrap this over, if that makes sense. So this is going to be left as a sort of catchment area so it's not all over my oven. But it certainly does look good and then just before I, uh, when I finish the broadcast I'll put it in to warm up again and in the last little bit I'll take the top off it and add a bit more cheese and grill it. But it does look good. And there it is all wrapped up. Um, I've put a couple of uh, knife holes in it just for any steam to escape. And I'm just going to put it in the oven at about 350, let it bake for a little while, uh, probably an hour, uh, make sure everything is nice and warmed up, and then I'll rewarm it when it is uh, time to eat.